Civics is still out there, eluding us at every turn. And I believe I found us a lead. Something about a Project Niobe. That facility holds many secrets. I'm sure of it. It's time we discover for ourselves what Civics is after. How's it going guys? We are back with another Destiny 2 video. Two videos in a row, right? I know! Crazy! Mind blown! But, as I said, they bring the news, I bring the video. So, here we are with another week with Twab. You've just seen the trailer that unlocks the final forge. What did you think? Did you actually go into it and see the relentless number of exploding shanks that make your life a living hell? Or did you die and die and die and die and... Did I say die to exploding shanks? Yeah, I think they overdid it with the exploding shanks. They really, really just threw enemies at you because they have no idea how to make meaningful content. But anyway, that aside, we've got the twab and we've got a bunch of info in here. So let's get down to business. Josh Hamrick was on call today to bring us a bunch of info. They've got some goals guiding them, he says, especially when it comes to the sandbox. They want to update as frequently as possible, so the next update will probably be in June, July, August? They want to investigate and improve outliers, underperformers in terms of popularity or effectiveness. So again, hopefully this should be ready by this time, June, July. Addresses major quality of life sandbox issues reported by the community to maintain a smooth and consistent gameplay experience once every six months. Yes, I'm being a bit cynical here guys, because you know what? The sandbox team hasn't proven that it's capable of doing anything outside of a six month time frame. It's just bad. Yes, I'm being cynical here and all jokes aside, I hope they can actually manage to do updates every six weeks. But is it realistic? You know, I've been here four years. Is it realistic? Probably not. But hey, I may be surprised. Who knows? So what does the update that they're currently working on for the sandbox work for? And it's the supers. Every supers are looking like they're getting a bump. So we've got increased damage to Golden Gun, Free Shot and Six Shooter. Shadow Shot with the Mobius Quiver, Arc Staff, Burning Maul, Hammer of Soul with Code of Siegebreaker, Fist of Havoc, Sentinel Shield, Nova Bomb, Cataclysm and Vortex and Daybreak. And we are getting small damage decreases for Blade Barrage, which I can understand but still kind of what? And Nova Warp. Now that one there is the one that I'm actually really surprised with. Because the damage of Nova Warp in PvE is shit. I've seen it firsthand, I've used it, it's shit. What it does really good is get rid of red bar enemies. Red bar enemies don't mean nothing in end game. Just saying that out there, and killing guardians in multi kills is fine. What they should have done here is not reduce the damage, because the damage was fine, in fact it needs a buff. What they needed to do, was actually reduced the radius of the Nova Blast. But hey, I'm not the sandbox team. They go on to say this is the beginning of the process. I mean, come on, you've had three to six months and this is still the beginning? Yeah. Anyway, moving on. First changes are to Hunter. Golden Gun, six shooter kills return a bullet. Practice makes perfect, super regen is increased. So Golden Gun is becoming a bit more usable. The fact that you get an extra bullet back if you manage to get six kills with your super it's pretty cool. PvP is completely useless, you're not getting 6 kills. But practice makes perfect, super regen, that could actually be handy in PvP. So 6 shooter kills, definitely a PvE one. Practice makes perfect, could be both. Blade Barrage. The damage is now heavily weighted on the delayed explosion instead of the knife impact. What does this mean? Who knows? We haven't seen it yet. But if the explosion is actually a bit more delayed than what you have now, then it means you can actually run away from it. If you can run away fast enough, it means Blade Barrage went from the go-to showstopper to pretty much garbage. But time will tell. 
Hopefully they'll have a demo of it soon in some form or another for us to see. Blade Ranch has also changed. Now it can kill you too if you're too close because the explosion can damage you. Well, I mean, it's a stopper. It's supposed to be a one shot super. Now you're telling me I have to be careful to action. I mean, when people requested a nerf to Blade Barrage, it wasn't for PvE. Even though it did need one because it made every other super useless. But what they were talking about was the fact that those that knives were homing missiles, even around corners. And that's what people wanted a nerf for. Not this. They fixed the bug where the knives would track allies. They didn't even notice it. But to be honest, this just shows how out of touch they are. They, they have notes here saying the golden gun change brings increased uptime with your super for way of the outlaw. This means a skill based mechanic to extend it. For way of the sharpshooter, it's the ability to earn your super more quickly. And that's fair enough. But the blade barrage one just seems completely and utterly <coughs> Night Stalker, Mobius Quiver. Entire damage bonus is applied on the first hit instead of stacking and multiplying. Well, Night Stalker, Hunter, people, you fellow guardians, now your super will one shot the guardian upon hitting. Good stuff. Something that should have been in the game two years ago is finally being made. Only took two years to update though. They've increased the tether radius and lifetime. That's pretty cool. And there's going to be cancerous in mayhem. They've also made it easier to fire successive tethers. But there you go. So hunters are still getting buffed even more. Spectral blades. Damage resistance in stealth decreased. Well, yeah. Duration of super while invisible slightly decreased. You can go for two and a half minutes with the super. Come on. That's redonkulous. Hopefully this actually fixes the exotic as well. I'm not holding my breath, but I'm hoping it does. They have notes here for this as well. This is a step one for Shadow Shot after six months, and we intend to keep improving the way it works. For this pass, we focused on Mobius Quiver quality of life. So hopefully by Destiny 3 or 4, they may move on to the next ones. Arc Strider changes. Super damage is now more heavily weighted towards the heavy palm attack. No attack damage was reduced, but much of the added damage for the super went into the heavy attack. Okay, that's fine. Lethal current bonus damage increased. I mean, Arc Strider didn't need a damage buff, but there you go. Just saying, with Radiant Flux, it didn't need one. Just, just pointing it out there. I know you guys love your hunters and you pretty much stand there all day. I don't even have the vocabulary to say right now what I want to say, but you know what I mean. Hunters are your love child. Give some of that to Titans and Warlock as well. Titan Sunbreaker. Changes. Sunspots. Double the damage of the burn on enemies. Okay, but can it kill them is the question. Probably not. Sun Warrior. Buff length increased from 3 seconds to 5 seconds. Whoopie doo. Now increases all outgoing damage. Good stuff. That's what we want to hear. Burning more. Slam radius increased. Good stuff, it means we can AoE for more damage, but probably single target for less. Slam Fire Tornado improved homing. Hopefully this is as good as Blade Barrage so I can follow enemies from the EDZ over to Mars and still hit them. Next we have Sentinel. Super damage is more heavily weighted on the heavy shield charge attack. No attack damage was reduced, but much of the added damage for this super went into the heavy attack. So does that mean my shield throw has now been decreasing damage and will no longer one shot guardians? If that's the case, good job Bungie, you just killed Sentinel. If that's not the case, good job Bungie, this is a PvE upgrade and it means I can actually do more damage, even though my bar will go down faster, so was there really any change? Who knows, but we'll soon find out. Striker changes, terminal velocity, there are now 3 tiers of hang time. The amount of hang time for each tier has been reworked. Each tier of hang time now causes 4 damaging shocks instead of 3, so we have 1 extra damage shock. Good stuff. The damage for the hang time bonuses has been increased significantly. That is good. That is good. This is bringing Titans slowly but surely back into the field. For what I have no idea yet, but we may be wanted one day. Trample. The light shoulder attack super cost has been reduced by 85%. Thankfully! Trample can now trigger every half a second instead of a second. I mean, it was pretty quick in the first place, but I guess now you can just spam it. And let's be realistic, this one right here, they have 
no idea how painful this is gonna be. I've already pissed people off in Crucible with this, standing next to their team and just Tiger knee, tiger knee, tiger knee, followed by a tiger uppercut, then back to tiger knee, tiger knee, tiger knee. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be fun. They did add some notes for Titan. For Code of the Earthshaker, the change to terminal velocity should make it more engaging. The first tier is now easier to achieve. For the second tier, you'll probably want some high ground. But if all you have is flatland, a directional slam near the peak of your lift can proc it. Finally, there's a new third tier that will require some serious height to activate. On top of that, you'll not only need to land your hang time slams, but also do it quickly enough to get all four possible to maximize damage. So there is an element of skill that's going to be involved here, and by the sounds of it, honestly, it's going to be situational. With Code of the Juggernaut, if you play it right, you can extend your super for minutes in PvE. I know this sounds crazy, but it takes foresight and strategic choices. The light shoulder attack is almost a movement mode with the cheaper cost. With the increased mobility, you should be able to lay some shoulder on bigger targets and then go on a run for little guys to rebuild your super energy. So this actually sounds broken. I mean, extend your super for minutes. I mean, so just because a hunter can do it for a bug, instead of fixing the bug, they've decided, hey, we're going to give Titans the ability as well with Code of the Juggernaut. So you can actually reclaim some super with your Tiger Knee as it happens. I mean, okay. I mean, I'm a Titan main. I'll take it. Give it to me and I'll see what I can do with it. It sounds cool. It sounds really interesting that you can do this in PvE. I'm obviously going to say that it doesn't have as much uh, use in PvP. But if the enemies are around you, close by, it means killing them will increase your super so you can quickly run around, look for them again and continue killing. So it is highly possible to do something like this in PvP, just it will be harder. But for PvE, I'd say this is a good update. This is pretty solid. I mean, longer supers in PvE is great. Just don't think they fought through the PvP part. Finally, we come over to Sadlock. I mean, Warlock. Dawnblade changes. Super duration is increased. Okay, that was simple enough. Voidwalker. Cataclysm. Increased detonation radius. Cluster damage increased. Improved cluster bomb homing to make it more consistent against single targets. Even cluster bombs no longer detonate one another. Come on, this is a good update. No one's going to use it, but it's a good update. Vortex. Linger damage increased significantly. That could actually be interesting. So that may actually be one to look out for. Don't get me wrong, Cataclysm sounds cool and everything. But you're just not going to use it. Nova Warp. Slower movement while charging. Nerf. Charging costs more energy and overall duration is reduced. Nerf. Damage resistance reduced very slightly. Nerf. PvP damage reduction. Nerf. Charge detonation will no longer be able to one-shot another player in their super provided it has damage resistance. I'm okay with that. So now this gives you a reason to go out and masterwork your gear for one super. You can go and spend a hundred masterwork cores so you can defend yourself against one super. You heard that right guys, probably over a hundred, maybe less than a hundred, I don't know, really don't care, but you're going to waste all those masterwork cores so uh, you can defend yourself against one super. They have notes, summed up, Nova Bomb now is just for large groups. So basically they've taken a perfectly good super that made Warlocks viable and fun to play and destroyed it. Good bloody job. Now no one's going to play Warlock because all they have now is the well. The Nova Warp changes above are small but we think together they will help bring it down into a good place. A place similar to the supers that we're raising up. No you just completely destroyed it Bungie. Good job. Stormcaller. Stormtrance increase the number of targets for chain lightning by one. Okay. That's fine. Easy enough. And he goes on to say well that's this is my part of the twirb is over. Thanks for reading. We're genuinely excited to get these changes into your hands so you can troll us even more and tell us why our decisions are horribly bad. If you're excited as I am for all these changes for the supers, you can look forward to them on January the 29th. Matchmaking is changing for competitive. 
we will be changing the matchmaking parameters so that opponents you find in competitive matchmaking will be closer to your glory rank. It's only taken six months! Where was all this feedback going? While the imbalanced match can still happen, and it probably will happen more often than not, we believe this change will reduce the number of occurrences dramatically. Yeah, good luck with that. Players may experience longer matchmaking times as we will try to ensure a good glory match before opening up the search criteria. Thank you so much for your feedback. Please keep it coming. It does keep us warm at nights when we have no electricity and need something to fan the fires so we can stay warm. All jokes aside, if this is the best they can come up with, with all the complaints that have been happening in competitive, I seriously worry about the future. For all you PvP lovers out there, you finally have the endgame. Trials is back. Nah, no, I'm only kidding, it's just Iron Banner. No one cares. Iron Banner is back. You've got two year one weapons that are random rolled and, well, they're just year one weapons that no one's ever going to use. But here they are for all their glory. Iron Banner and Valor bonuses. It's going to be double during the week, triple on the weekend until reset. January 15, 2019 is the day it arrives, which is Tuesday, and it ends on January the 22nd. Sadly, this is another banner event that's coming at a bad time, so I just won't be able to take much part in it. I won't be available till Friday, but that's when triple starts, and if you're looking for those resets, the triple XP is where you want to be anyway. So uh, believe me when I say this with earnest and pure open heartness, Iron Banner PvP plays really well. Win or lose, for some reason, the games just flow better. Yeah, you get stomped and you stomp, but the games just feel more balanced. I don't know what it is, but it does. It's not as bad as quick play, so if you do get the chance, go for it. Play it. It is a fun event, and it's got some cool armor, so you do get some stuff. And if you're still trying to climb that powerful ladder to get to that 650, it gives you powerful engrams. What more do you want? This is a bit of a medical report, nothing that I do normally, but I have to make this one. Shredding Guitars. Shortly after the launch of Destiny 2 Forsaken, Destiny Player Support began monitoring player reports describing intermittent guitar errors in the final encounters of the Last Wish raid. Uh, so, Last Wish came out in September, right? With Forsaken, so all of September, October, November, December, or in January. It's been six months. Six months! And they still haven't solved this problem! Anyway, these errors have been significantly impactful to players attempting the Petra's Run Triumph. Duh! Which requires fire teams to complete the Last Wish raid in a single session without no deaths. After comprehensive investigation, we currently believe that the Last Wish guitar errors occur when players hit the limit on the number of server-controlled objects within a single area. This issue is exacerbated during the final encounter in Last Wish. When encounter-specific objects are left over from the Riven fight, Reaching this limit causes the server to crash, resulting in guitar errors for all players. So what you're saying is, your spaghetti code is the root cause. We get it, and they will have an update for us in March. Not January, not February, but March. So, let's count again. September, October, November, December, January, February, March. That is five, six, Seven months. Seven months to fix a problem that should have been fixed day one because it is so horrendously bad. Add to that, they're still not fixing the Storm Exotic quest. It is impossible to play. Still no fix for that. It's impossible to get for new guys. Way to encourage people to come and get your game. Well, you fellow Guardians, you amazing people, that is the TWAB in all its glory. To summarize, Hunters got buffed. Titans got some kind of buff. Kind of. Maybe. Possibly. I'm not sure. Warlocks got nerfed. Moral of the story. Go play Hunters. They're the love child. Until next time, Guardians. Remain Legend.